You have been working so hard, running from here to there, handling so many multiple priorities, and now you really need some rest. You close your eyes, you want to apply your mindfulness techniques, and what you notice is that there's so much noise that you feel restless, it doesn't work. Have you had this experience ever? My name is Christoph Glaser, and over the last 20 plus years, I had together with uh, our great team the pleasure to support more than 500,000 people, uh, employees and leaders in organizations, um, through trainings, through workshops and talks. And obviously, the more dynamic we are, the more intense we work, the more important it is that we find deep rest. And mindfulness is one of the most powerful ways to find that. However, we need to use the power of the breath to really be able to apply mindfulness when we need it the most. And that's why in the TLEX Institute, we teach and practice breath-based mindfulness. And I wanna share with you three amazing benefits, three incredible impacts the breath has on you and me. Number one is the impact your breath has on your autonomic nervous system. Our life is just a miracle. Our nervous system is, is a miracle, right? And one part of it we can consciously impact. I can now decide to wave at you and here it comes. My arm goes up, I'm waving at you and there is a connection established. Yet there are many inner functions, inner organs we cannot impact consciously. If I'm nervous right now as I'm speaking, I cannot tell to my heart, well, go slower. Take it easy, my dear friend. Well, I can say it, it won't listen. Would you agree? And maybe that's also a good news. Imagine you would need to have to manage all these inner organs while you're performing and while you're doing all your duties and activities. Yet, when these inner functions are out of balance, well, then we need ways to still be able to manage. And here comes the power of the breath. You know, let me share with you, we have, and you might know that, two main functions of our autonomic nervous system. The one, the parasympathetic nervous system. When it is activated well, then we can relax well, we will sleep well, we can uh, rejuvenate, we can reproduce. That's great. We also need the activity and the function of the sympathetic nervous system. Well, we want to be dynamic, we want to run, we want to be out there in the world doing many things. For that, we need the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. And when that balance is difficult to find, we are either too lethargic, lethargic or we are chronically stressed. Chronic stress would typically mean that our sympathetic nervous system is too much into activity. It's really great to know and understand that there are specific breathing techniques which will allow us to activate both the parasympathetic or the sympathetic nervous system. And in the TLEX Institute, we have done a lot of scientific research. We are using some of the most amazing techniques which go back uh, to the yogic science and we share with our part participants techniques which allow us to specifically manage the part of our autonomic nervous system which most needs it. Number two is the connection between breath and emotions. Managing our emotions is vitally important for our health, for our happiness, but even for performance at work. There are studies which suggest that there's a direct link between performance at work and our emotional intelligence. Every emotion we experience corresponds to a particular rhythm in our breath. Isn't that interesting? How do you breathe when you're totally relaxed? Let's say you sit on your sofa, you had a great day. Ah, <sighs> isn't it? It's relieving, it is longer, it is a nice flow. And how do you breathe when you feel upset? Short, shallow? <laughs> now, these are two extremes, but interesting enough, throughout the day, our rhythm of the breath corresponds and reflects our emotions. Isn't that amazing? As we experience the complexity of our life, the breath just always mirrors our emotional experience. And that, yogis knew and scientists are able to confirm today, is not a one-way street. By working on the breath, we can directly impact our emotions. So let's a little, look a little closer into that. Back in 2002, a couple of scientists from Belgium were able to put evidence to that. What did they do? Well, they specifically evoked certain emotions in their participants and they noticed the rhythm of breath 
in their participants. And they saw that there were clear patterns. Imagine for fear, for jealousy, for excitement, you can see clear patterns of breath when these are emotions are evoked. Now they brought in another group of participants and now they had to had them breathe in these particular rhythms and guess what? Quite reliably these rhythms of breathing evoked the emotions. So there's a direct link. And in the Telex Institute we use very powerful breathing techniques such as the sky breathing to help us manage these complex emotions and build that inner calm and peace. Number three, the impact of the breath on our functions of the brain. Now I shared with you that there's more than 20,000 studies giving evidence that mindfulness techniques are very powerful and there's much lesser studies which show the impact or the correlation between the breath and the brain, yet some of the few studies are just remarkable. And so is our brain. Every day, you and me, we have almost 6,000 thoughts coming to our mind. Thoughts of joy, thoughts of sorrow, thoughts with great intelligence, some thoughts which are not so intelligent. And guess what? Neither for you or me, these thoughts are knocking at the, knocking at the doors of our brain and saying, can I come in? Suddenly they are there. And to manage them is vitally important. Now, um, a study back in 2016 has done something absolutely remarkable. Look at this. In this design, participants first learned breath-based mindfulness techniques. It takes a moment to get familiar with breathing techniques and they took about two weeks to exercise. Once this was complete, this phase of, of, of practice, they split the group. Both the groups had to look at certain images which were quite shocking. Images which quite surely would evoke fear and anxiety. Now interestingly, one group though was told, when you look at these images, observe also your breath. So imagine two groups, both have been trained, both look at the images, one group, though, also observes the rhythm of the breath while looking at the images, not even applying any complicated technique, just observing it. Will that have an impact? Well, subjectively, it surely had. The group, which was also observing the breath, reported less fear, less anxiety, were more resilient, could kind of let go of that stress much quicker. But here it comes. With the MRI, changes in the activity of the brain were showcased. Now, in the group observing the rhythm of the breath, the amygdala was less active. And that's an important one, right? The amygdala is part of our autonomic nervous system. It's part of the limbic brain. It's an area in your brain that is quickly activated when you experience stress or fear. And interestingly, when the amygdala is activated strongly, it absorbs a lot of energy in our brain. And so the amygdala hijack can happen. What does that mean? The amygdala can absorb so much energy in our brain that we are hardly able to think rationally. And that's exactly what happened for the participants here, which were not observing the breath. For them, the prefrontal cortex was less activated. And in the prefrontal cortex, the rational thinking takes place. Now, imagine your amygdala absorbs all the energy. You experience a lot of fear and your rational part of the brain is not able to tell you, wait a moment, these images cannot harm you. So we are truly subject to our experience. Yet, when we are observing the breath, the study shows, the amygdala is yes, less active. We can cognitively reflect and debrief our experience and go through it much smoother. Isn't that amazing? When we learn to manage our breath and then observe the breath in critical situation, let's say you have a very important meeting with your boss or a presentation and you realize that you're getting into some sort of stress, just observing the rhythm will change your activity in the brain and hence you'll be better able to manage this important situation for you. These are three of the very powerful impacts your breath has on you. Number one, 
the direct correlation with your autonomic nervous system. Number two, the connection between the breath and the emotion. And number three, the impact it has on your brain activities. And so, when you are really dynamic in your action, when you have a lot to do and you want to relax, it can be a huge advantage to use breath-based mindfulness. So I hope you enjoyed the session on the science of breath and the power of breath-based mindfulness. And if you would now feel ready to do a practice, just click that link below, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to be in touch with you.